the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the Public Financial Management Bill and the Economic Transformation Bill receives the nod in Parliament today without a vote. Chief of Presidential Staff and Senior Advisor to the President on National Security highlights that policy changes during government transitions pose a significant problem in Sri Lanka. Following two days of gains, the Colombo stock market returns to a downward trend. And Porsche's operating profit drops by more than 20% in the first half, while sales declined by 4.8%. Very good evening and thank you for joining us. The second reading debate on the State Financial Management Bill and the Economic Transformation Bill was held today in Parliament. Meanwhile, the State Minister of Finance, Ranjit Sambalapiti, has stated that the laxity in financial discipline has impacted the country's crisis situation. The Public Financial Management Bill and the Economic Transformation Bill have been passed in Parliament today with amendments and without a vote. Amendments were incorporated to the bills during the committee stage and subsequently the third reading was passed without a vote. These two bills were presented to the parliament on the 22nd of May in this year. The government says two significant bills are aimed at bolstering the country's economy. The Economic Transformation Bill and the Public Financial Management Bill are designed to enhance the management of public finances, thereby safeguarding against future economic downturns. Explaining the bills, the State Minister of Finance, Shehan Semasinghe, said the economic transformation law is aimed at preventing future economic collapses and the legislation stems from the vision of President Ranil Vikramasinghe rather than being proposed by the International Monetary Fund. He stated that the recent stabilization of the economy following previous downturns underscored the importance of preserving the stability going forward. Adding to it, he said that it is necessary to maintain optimal levels of public financial management to avert future economic crises. The Public Financial Management Bill is said to be presented with a focus on enhancing accountability in managing public finances. This legislative initiative aligns with the recommendations from a collaborative program with the IMF and holds significant importance for the country's future in financial management. Meanwhile, the State Minister of Finance Ranjit Simbalapiti has stated that the laxity in financial discipline has impacted the country's crisis situation. While two key economic bills got the nod at Parliament today, he noted that efforts are underway to introduce a series of bills, including the Central Bank Act and State Debt Management Act, to strengthen financial discipline. Mr. Sagar Ratnayaka, Chief of Presidential Staff and Senior Advisor to the President on National Security, highlighted that policy changes during government transitions pose a significant problem in Sri Lanka. He added that to address this issue, several structural reforms have been implemented across the government, financial and governance sectors. He emphasised that every effort has been made to establish a stable economic system in the country. He said that notably the Central Bank Act, Public Finance Act and the Public Debt Management Act have already been submitted along with the Economic Transformation Law which was passed in Parliament today. Mr. Ratnayaka shared these insights while delivering a keynote address at the technical conference on the Port Interest Expressway organised by the Minister of Transport and Highways which was held yesterday at the Cinnamon Lakeside Hotel in Colombo. He noted the successful progress of the Port Entrance Expressway project and expressed the confidence that its completion would significantly bolster the country's economy. The Port Access Expressway will significantly enhance the country's efforts to establish an export-oriented economy and will attract direct foreign investment and leverage modern digital technology, utilizing local talent and creativity for national development. Speaker of Parliament Mahindayapa Abewardhana has discussed furthering cooperation between Sri Lanka and China while on a visit to the country this week. A Parliament statement said that discussions focused on enhancing cooperation under the Belt and Road Initiative, particularly in advancing key projects like the Colombo Port City and Hambantota Port. Sri Lanka is a key partner in China's Belt and Road Initiative, known in China as the One Belt One Road and sometimes referred to as the New Silk Road. A global infrastructure development strategy adopted by the Chinese government in 2013 to invest in more than 150 countries and international organizations. Abe Wardana was in China to attend the 8th China-South Asia Exposition held in Kunmin, Yunnan province. <music> 
Sri Lanka's apparel firms have warned against ending a special value-added tax scheme which avoided upfront payments and protected cash flows from delays in tax refunds by the government. The SVAT scheme is due to be abolished under the International Monetary Fund-backed program to streamline the tax system. According to a statement by the Sri Lanka's Joint Apparel Association Forum, while authorities have committed to significantly speed up valid VAT refunds, the apparel industry say it has not seen measurable improvements on time taken for refunds as yet. Bandul Fernando, the chairman of Sri Lanka Chamber of Garment Exporters, which represents the SME sector with JAF, said in a statement that the apparel sector is currently grappling with significant challenges in the global market, which is already being reflected in the reduced export figures. He added that the failure to reconsider this policy will almost certainly exacerbate financial strain on the sector and further erode Sri Lanka's export competitiveness as funds will inevitably be tied up the refund process even in the most efficient systems. He stated that abolishing this VAT scheme without progress on speeding up VAT refunds would be catastrophic for the SME sector. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. After two days of positive performance, the Colombo stock market shifted back to a negative trend. Both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SR20 Index ended today's trading session in the red. To get the insights of today's market performance, let's go to Nishara Pereira joining us now from Capital Alliance Securities. Yes, Anuradhi. Now, as we observe today, the Columbus Stock Exchange concluded on a negative note compared to a previous trading session, driven by weakened sentiment and a cautious wait-and-see approach uh, by market participants ahead of tomorrow's election date announcement. Now, the market closed at 11,604.55 points, marking a 61-point decrease from the previous session with a lower than average turnover of 503 million rupees. Now, the SL20 index also experienced a decline, dropping 19 points to end the day at 3,394.37 points. Now, institutional engagement was subdued with market activity primarily driven by high net worth individuals and retail investors in consumer sector stocks. The top, turners were, the top turnovers were recorded in John Keel's Hotels PLC, Ceylon Tobacco and Dialogue Axiata PLC. Foreign activity was also minimum, amounting to 13 million rupees in purchases and 12 million rupees in sales. The top five gainers for the day were Blue Diamonds Jewelry, Industrial Asphalt, Amana Life, Myland and United Motors. The top five losers for the day were Citrus, Hip Kadua, Hapugas Tenna, Fortland, LCB Finance and Rygum Salters. Sri Lanka's Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing and Services recorded a strong rise displaying steep expansions in both segments, indicating a strong recovery within the economy in the month of June of 2024. To get a detailed analysis on this, let's turn to Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. In June 2024, Sri Lanka's Purchasing Managers Index, also known as the PMI, recorded steep expansions in index values in both the manufacturing and service sectors. The PMI for manufacturing recorded an index value of 56.6, indicating an expansion of activities across the manufacturing sector. All the sub-indices for PMI except employment, which include new orders, production, stock of purchases, and suppliers' delivery time, recorded values above the neutral threshold in June. The expansion in new orders and production was mainly due to growth in manufacturing within the food and beverages sector, and stock of purchases also expanded, which was in line with the increase in new orders and production. However, employment did contract during June as firms were still cautious about refilling the vacant positions that they had and suppliers' delivery time also further increased in June because of congestion in the major shipping ports. As a result, the manufacturing sector expects improvements within the next three months and also a gradual recovery of the economy. 
Similarly, the PMI for the service sector displayed a significant expansion in service activities in June as well, and this is reflected by the Business Activity Index, recording an index value of 63.5. The expansion in business activities was driven by improvements across most sectors and business activities in wholesale and retail, finance, transportation and personal services grew significantly in June. However, accommodation, food and beverage services remained at the same level as in the previous month and this is largely because of slow moving tourist arrivals during the off season. New businesses also increased as a result of increases in sub-indices and employment increased due to new recruitments that were made by several companies. Overall, the expectations for business activities continue to improve at a higher rate, supported by favorable conditions within the economy, and, for, and this further indicates a path to economic recovery. Gold prices fell in Asian trade today, seeing little safe haven demand despite increasing risk of sentiment as traders rode a sharp appreciation in the Japanese yen. Spot gold slid 0.9% to $2,376.11 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in August tumbled 1.7% to $2,375.40. A rout in broader commodity markets also raged on with copper prices extended a sinking to a near four-month low amid persistent concerns over top importer China. Gold prices fell as traders favor the yen for its safe haven appeal amid declining global market risk appetite. Oil prices fell today, weighed down by persistent worries about the demand outlook in top crude importer China. Meanwhile, investors were also awaiting upcoming U.S. economic data for further cues on the health of the world's largest economy. Brent crude futures for September deliveries slipped 0.5% to $81.26 per barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude futures dropped 0.6% to $76.24 a barrel. The downbeat sentiment came despite data showing a drop in U.S. crude inventories, which offered only limited support to oil markets. Today, the Sri Lankan rupee has strengthened against the U.S. dollar, as reported by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Consequently, the buying rate of the U.S. dollar has decreased from 299 rupees and 7 cents to 298 rupees and 94 cents, and the selling rate has similarly fallen from 308 rupees and 39 cents to 308 rupees and 24 cents. The rupee's appreciation extended to other major global currencies as well. Let's now review today's exchange rates. Short commercial break now. More updates right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Tata Motors, one of the world's leading automotive manufacturers, along with its authorized distributor Demo, announced the launch of the all-new Tata Zenon Yoda, addressing the growing demand for a versatile and reliable pickup vehicle in the market. Robust and stylish workhouse, the Tata Shinon Yoda promises comfort and safety while ensuring smooth cargo transport for effortless daily operations. The new Tata Shinon Yoda is engineered to meet the demands of customers seeking lower cost of ownership and superior vehicle performance for higher profitability. The smart pickup is available in 4 into 2 configuration with an impressive payload capacity of 1,250 kg. Powered by a 30-litre diesel engine, it delivers an output of 85 horsepower and 250 nm torque. With the highest chassis thickness in this category, a robust front overhang, superior metal quality, and advanced safety features, the vehicle ensures maximum safety and durability. The new Tata Shinon Yoda 
is assembled at Demos State of the Art Vehicle Assembly Facility in Valley Varia. It also assembles the Tata Ace, popular known as Demo Bata in Sri Lanka. Committed to quality, the plant employs rigorous control measures and remains agile in the meeting current customer needs while being strategically poised to introduce new products as market demands evolve. Shangri-La Colombo presents an extraordinary culinary experience with flavors of Turkey, an extravaganza of Turkish food and culture from the 2nd to the 11th of August 2024. This exceptional culinary festival will immerse guests in the rich traditions of Turkish cuisine. Featuring a carefully curated selection of traditional dishes crafted by two distinguished chefs in Shangri-La Istanbul, the festival will be hosted at Central Shangri-La Colombo's all-day dining restaurant and is proudly presented in collaboration with Turkish Airlines and the Embassy of Turkey. Two renowned Turkish chefs who are celebrated for their expertise in Turkish gastronomy will put their talents on display during the flavors of Turkey. This event will offer a diverse area of Turkish delicacies including savory kebabs, succulent meats and exquisite desserts. Guests will enjoy a rich tapestry of flavors with an expertly crafted menu featuring barbecue delights, flavored donor, refreshing Turkish salads and traditional sweets. Sitting for flavors of Turkey are priced at 6,650 rupees net per person for weekday lunch from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., 10,010 rupees net per person for weekend brunch from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. and 9,337 rupees net per person for the dinner buffet from 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Building on a century of engineering excellence, Haley's Fenton scored a triple win at the National Business Excellence Awards 2024. Showcasing its enduring legacy and innovative approach to engineering, the team once again became the winner in its highly competitive infrastructure and utility sector in the extra-large category. Next-gen engineering studio and emerging subsidiaries solely dedicated to providing design visualization solutions within Haley's Fenton's also became became the gold award winner in the small business category and was even awarded the runner-up title in the other services sector. The National Business Excellence Awards held annually by the National Chamber of Commerce in Sri Lanka serve as a platform to honor businesses that have made significant contributions to the economic development of the country. Virtusa Corporation, a global provider of digital strategy, digital engineering and IT services and solutions, recently announced it has been named by the consulting report as one of the top 50 consulting firms of 2024. From advising on digital transformation and operational efficiency to navigating regulatory complexities and fostering sustainable practices, these leading firms were selected for their consistent performance in providing clients with exceptional consulting services. The consulting report is a publication focused on business news, leadership dynamics and corporate actions related to consulting, professional services and IT service industries. According to the publication, this year's award winners were selected across a wide variety of sectors and geographies and comprise some of the most trusted and influential professional services in the world. They help provide corporations, governments and other types of organizations with analytics, insights and counsel on wide variety of matters. Awarded firms help their clients solve their biggest problems, capitalize on their opportunities and in some cases avoid costly mistakes. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian shares dropped today morning trading with Tokyo's benchmark losing more than 1,000 points at one point and closing down more than 3% as pessimism set in over a nosedive on Wall Street. Japan's benchmark Nikkei 225 lost 3.3% to 37,869.51 and Australia's S&P ASX 200 shed 1.2% to 7,870.40. South Korea's cost speed declined 1.8% to 2,707.97. Hong Kong's Hang Seng declined 1.9% to 16,985.94, while the Shanghai Composite fell 0.6% to 2,883.59. 
The S&P 500 and Nasdaq ended at multi-week lows, with the S&P 500 snapping one of its longer streaks without a daily decline of more than 2%, as lackluster Alphabet and Tesla earnings undermined investor confidence in mega-cap names. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq suffered their biggest single-day losses in nearly two years on Wednesday, dragged down by the same big tech names that had powered this year's rally. The Dow shed one and a quarter percent, the S&P 500 tumbled 2.3 percent, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq nosedived more than 3.6 percent. As the first of the Magnificent Seven stocks reported their latest quarterly numbers, investors looked to see whether their lofty valuations were justified. Despite reporting a second quarter earnings beat, Alphabet lost more than $100 billion in market value on Wednesday, its shares shedding 5 percent as investors focused on a slowdown in advertising growth and larger-than-expected AI-related expenses. And Tesla reported its lowest profit margin in more than five years and missed second-quarter earnings estimates, sending its shares down more than 12 percent. The other megacaps, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Meta platforms all closed lower, with AI darling NVIDIA shedding the most, down 6.8 percent. Visa was among the stocks that weighed on the Dow. Shares fell 4 percent after the credit card giant's third quarter revenue growth fell short of expectations. As stocks tumbled, the VIX volatility index, known as Wall Street's fear gauge, closed at its highest level since April 19th. But there were some bright spots, including AT&T, which gained more than 5 percent after beating forecasts for wireless subscriber additions. Porsche's operating profit fell by just over a fifth in the first half to $3.32 billion, with sales down 4.8 percent. The luxury sports car maker said it was fighting to restore production volumes and to reprioritize spending after supply chain snags. Porsche hit a bumpy road in the first half due to falling sales and profits. Operating profit was down by just over a fifth to around $3.3 billion and sales dropped almost 5%. The luxury automaker said Wednesday updates to five out of six model lines also hit sales and costs. Its results were largely in line with analyst forecasts and shares rose in early trades. Investors weren't so calm the day before, however, when the stock price fell around 4%. Porsche surprised markets by cutting its outlook for the rest of the year on Tuesday. The firm blamed a supply chain shortage, which it believes will trim output by more than 10,000 cars. Porsche said a supply cut would affect production of all models and possibly lead it to shut down one vehicle series. Shares in Porsche have slipped since last May. A string of setbacks hit the German carmaker from software problems to launch delays. Weakening sales in China also shook investor confidence. Rivals like Mercedes-Benz and Aston Martin have also warned sales will take a hit this year. They cited model launches and revamps as car makers tried to make their EV offerings more attractive while keeping combustion engine cars competitive. And that marks the end of today's nightly business report. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest updates across the business globe. I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching and have a good night.